So since this is a solo game that takes just about 10 minutes to play, and this one is offered by Button Shy Games, but it's also designed by Scott Alms, both of which have a lot of experience making these pocket-sized games. And there are a couple cool things I want to say about this one because they did actually send me a prototype copy of the game. And even though this is a prototype, the artwork looks amazing, and I imagine it's going to look very similar to this in the final release, but as always, it is subject to change. But the other cool thing I want to show you, which is actually perfect for this situation, is that I have installed a new camera. And I know my playmat's upside down and my cable management is non-existent, but I did just set this up about 10 minutes ago, so this is what we got. And the camera is advertised as a 4K camera, so hopefully I can zoom in a little bit here and you can see the cards a little bit better. But I think this should work well to explain a little bit about how this game plays. Because this is a solo game where you're going to be going against the deck of cards. The way that the game starts is that you're going to be putting your lighthouse out on the table, and then you're just going to be using this to track your health throughout the game. You start the game with 5 health, and then you're going to be dealing out a few cards beside the lighthouse. Each of these cards are dual use, you're going to be putting four out to start the game, and you're going to be putting them with the monster side up. Each of these cards also does have a monster ability that can be triggered by a specific event. For the cards in the base game, this is either when the card is placed or when the card is defeated. But you don't have to worry about them right now because they are ignored when you first set up the game. You'll then be dealing a number of cards into your own hand depending on how difficult you want the game to be. For the normal mode, you're going to be dealing 5 cards to yourself, but you can deal less if you want to make it more difficult. But like I said, these cards are dual use, and when you're holding them in your hand, you're going to be holding them so that the monster side is down. When the cards are in this configuration, they're known as traps, and you can use these to attack the monsters that are out in play. The game starts on the player's turn, and on your turn you get to take two actions, and the two different actions that you can perform are to either play a card from your hand anywhere into this row of cards, or instead you can attack with the cards that you have already deployed. And the way that these cards actually work is that you'll notice there are a number of skulls at the top, and then there's also numbers on each side of the skull. The skull just represents their health. Each card in this game only does one damage, including the ones in your hand. And then those numbers indicate how far those monsters can reach when they do attack. And this works exactly the same for the trap cards, but if I use an action to put a card out into play, an interesting thing here is that just with the way that these were dealt, three different monsters can attack me. So for example, right now, this one can attack two to the left, which I am within range. This one can attack one to the right, and this one can attack three to the right. So I am in range of those three monsters. This one can only attack two to the right, so it can't quite reach my monster. But I only have three health, and since three can hit me, that means that I will be destroyed when it is the monster's turn. Well, of course, unless I'm able to change the situation. And there's a couple ways I could do this. I could go ahead and play another card into the row as my second action. And when I do this, now I only have two monsters in range of this card, but I still have three in range of this one. But that's not exactly what I'm going to be doing because we do also have these special abilities here as well. And this one says that I can move a monster to any location in the row when I play this card. So if I were to play this one to the right, and then I use the ability to move this card wherever I want. I can move it over here to make it out of range. Now I only have one monster that's able to reach me, and since I have three health, that is not enough to eliminate my card. This is generally a good thing, except for the monsters are always going to be attacking from right to left, and they're going to continue trying to attack until they're able to. And since they're not able to defeat this card, then they're going to be moving to the next leftmost card, which would then be the lighthouse. Unfortunately, a lot of these cards are in range of the lighthouse, so instead of me losing the card, I'd be losing health to my lighthouse, which I don't want to happen. So what I'll do instead is I will play a card basically as a sacrifice so that it gets attacked instead of my lighthouse. So I'll just go ahead and place this card right here. And the reason I chose this one is because when it's defeated, I can immediately replace it with a new trap. And those are my two actions, so now we're going to be moving into the monsters phase, and what we do here is just draw a new card, put it out at the end of the row, and this one has an ability that gets activated when it's placed, so this is going to tell me to add an additional nightmare from the deck. And because of that, I'm going to be adding two cards for this turn. 
And like I said, the monsters will try to attack me, but after you've drawn the card and resolved any of these effects, you're always going to check if there are more than three monster cards out in the row. And in this case, there are quite a bit more than three, and what that means is that my lighthouse is going to be losing one health. This is one of the reasons why it's really important to make sure that you're not being overrun by a whole ton of monsters. But now the monsters are going to try to attack and they're always going to attack from right to left. So first we check this, it has three health. Is there at least three monsters that are able to attack it? And in this case, this one's able to attack it, but that is the only one. So that one's safe. Then we look at this one. There is at least one monster able to attack it, so this one is defeated, and it goes into the discard. As soon as the monsters successfully attack, their turn ends immediately, but this card did have the ability that I can immediately swap it with another card when it is defeated, so I can just go ahead and do that now. So I'll just go ahead and play this card here, and now it goes back to my turn, and I get my two actions. And for my first action, I'm going to be playing this card into this place, and it has a range of four to the left, and it also gains me a re-attack action when I place the card. This works out well for me because this one is within range of at least two of my cards and it has two health, which means that I can use that free action to defeat this monster. Now the cool thing here is that when you do defeat a monster, this card actually becomes a trap and it goes into your hand. Everything can just slide over and I still do have one more action that I can perform. And I am able to defeat another monster, so I'll just go ahead and do that and destroy this monster, adding that card to my hand and preparing me for the next round. And that's pretty much everything you need to know to play this game because the game just continues like this until either your lighthouse runs out of health or until you have defeated all the monsters. If you're interested in this one, I will have a link to the campaign in the description below. And if you are interested to know what I think about it after having played it myself, I really, really like this one. I've probably played it about 10 times now. The game does have enough variability with the different cards all having a unique special ability associated with them. And since you're putting some out at the beginning of the game and some of them are going to get burned with different effects, it's going to change the ones that you have access to from game to game, which is the way that most of the variability is introduced in this game. But I would like to see a bit more variability added, which I expect will be offered in the campaign if they're adding any mini expansions or additional cards that you can swap in. As always, when you are drawing cards from the deck, there is that randomness of which cards you draw, and it is possible that you might just end up drawing certain cards that are just really, really bad for you, or conversely, really, really good for you. This can make the difficulty swing a little bit when you're playing on a given difficulty. I personally really didn't see this as an issue, but I just want to let you know that it is there. So if you are choosing a difficulty, there is a little bit of a range there depending on the cards that you draw, which could make it a little bit harder or a little bit easier than your average play on that difficulty. It's a lot of fun. I love the theme. I love the artwork and I love how easy it is to play. And there was never a time where I felt like it was fiddly in any way. So if those all sound like things that you might be interested in, like I said, it is linked in the description below.